Greetings and welcome back for another Paranormal Pit Stop, which tonight will focus on a renowned living history museum sandwiched between U.S. Route 9 and Seashore Road in the unincorporated community of Cold Spring, New Jersey, acting as a nonprofit educational institution preserving examples of early American life, focused on historic preservation, education, and heritage tourism, and rumored to hold a number of chilling hauntings. Are you prepared to brave the ghosts of the historic Cold Spring village. Historically, predating settlement by Europeans, lands now holding southern Jersey were heavily populated by the Keche Meche tribe of the Lenape, who would travel to the barrier islands through the summer months to hunt and fish. In 1609, English explorer Henry Hudson would adventure through the Delaware Bay. In 1630, the Dutch West India Company would purchase a tract of local land from native inhabitants. And in 1714, Cold Spring Presbyterian Church was founded out of a log meeting house and was followed closely by the establishment of the Cold Spring community. In 1723, Lower Township was formed. In 1764, the original church building was replaced by a shingled structure. And in 1798, Lower was formally incorporated. In 1809, a Cold Spring post office was established, and in 1823, the church was reconstructed in brick. On an interesting side note, this old parish's graveyard boasts the title of holding more descendants of the Mayflower than any other place outside of Massachusetts. In 1973, Dr. Joseph Salvatore, along with his wife Patricia Ann, would acquire the Cold Spring Grange Hall, which was originally constructed in 1912, and that today stands at the community's entrance from Seashore Road and acts as a restaurant. The Salvatores, along with their children Rick and Kate, would follow a shared dream of transforming the plot so that visitors could feel as if they were stepping back in time to the 1800s. And incidentally, they would acquire a collection of 18th and 19th century buildings that they would place across their land, all of which would be refurbed with authentic period furnishings, fixtures, tools, decorations, and various additional effects. After eight years of development, their village was officially opened to the public in 1981, and in 1984, the site was donated to the citizens of Cape May County, who would retain ownership for eight years until 1993 when it was once again returned to the Salvatore family. In turn, the family would donate the village to the newly formed nonprofit corporation, the historic Cold Spring Village Foundation, who continues to oversee operations to this day. And in 2016, the site would be added to the New Jersey Register of Historic Places as the historic Cold Spring Village Historic District. Cold Spring Village remains open to visitors to this day, offering a total of 27 historic buildings relocated from various places across Cape May County, several of which hold spots on the National Register of Historic Places, alongside a number of events, tours, and educational opportunities of both the historic and paranormal variety. The historic Cold Spring Village has long been saturated in a wealth of ghost stories and purported hauntings, with many theorizing resident spirits may be tied both to its structures, the oldest of which, Cox Hall Cottage, dates back to 1691, and is actually the earliest known surviving building in Cape May County, as well as to its aged furniture and antiques, and both staff and visitors have reported doors that open and close by themselves, objects sighted moving on their own, instances of lights flicking from on to off and explosions and the feelings of being watched, followed, or even touched by something unseen. At the old church's cemetery, several have told of encounters with shadowy figures and full-bodied apparitions in clothing spanning the eras that roam amongst the headstones after dark. The Spicer Leaming House, originally constructed in 1820, is said to harbor the ghost of a little girl, who's usually spied staring from a second-story window with her hands folded under her chin, and who's been most often encountered on the upper floor in the room that holds an old doll bed, which, it's documented, was the favorite toy of a 10-year-old girl who owned the toy long ago. Her presence has also been known to tug at clothing and cause the rocking chair to rock on its own. At the ice cream parlor, the entity of a short woman with candles in her hand has been sighted seemingly waiting, some say on her husband. And at the Dennisville Inn, which was constructed in 1836 as a tavern and inn out of Dennisville and that was later converted for hosting Baptist church meetings, the spirit of a man has been heard calling out for some working girl lost to time. The ghost of an old farmer has been spied around the village's tractor, and a spectral native man has been encountered about town. 
Lastly, those visiting the Village County store have described strange pounding noises heard on the porch, the disembodied sounds of someone murmuring and cursing, and instances in which individuals, especially women, feel suddenly unwelcomed or even in danger. Thanks for joining us on this Paranormal Pit Stop. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time.